it doesn't look like a router at all, but it is. And it has gigabit Wi-Fi speeds. And not only next to it, even far away, we have great speeds. Super slim, you can place it on a desk, next to your clean white setup, on a wooden table, or even hang it on the wall like a sleek piece of art. This is the slimmest router that I've used so far with crazy speeds even far away that I wasn't expecting at all and a great coverage including the test that we did two floors above. Let's go and check it out. And if you are watching this video on your Windows 10 or 11 computer and you still haven't activated and can't even edit your desktop icons, don't forget to check out cdksales.com where we can find budget official OEM keys at an affordable price. And with the coupon code that you can see on screen and down below on the video description, it will get even cheaper. This is the TP-Link Archer Air 5, just 8 millimeters thick and it is really easy to set up. It has two gigabit ports and one USB Type-C port. We just need to plug it in and that's it. Although it's designed for wall mounting, I prefer placing on my desk and you would never guess that this is a router. It looks more like a deco piece blending in discreetly while blasting Wi-Fi everywhere. Now in terms of the setup it's that simple. Just plug it in, download the TP-Link app and you are up and running in about two minutes. Speeds in the same room here about 40 square meters range from 700 megabits per second up to 900, 1000 or 1 gigabit speed which is crazy. Full gigabit over Wi-Fi and this means that I didn't bother to test out the gigabit connectivity over land because I wouldn't get more than this and if I have gigabit over Wi-Fi I don't want any cables. Now moving to the other room where we have walls and doors which is great for those that have a 80 square meters 100 120 square meters house so this is the speed that we will get. Moving to the backyard which is about a total of 200 square meters with this huge wall here at the front. It's held really steady at 400 megabits per second even when I went all the way down on the backyard. Now moving upstairs, one floor directly above the router, I got 220 megabits per second, which is not bad at all. And even when I went to the second floor, which I did check out if I still was connected to the TP-Link connection router, and I was, but only with 10 megabits. So that would not be enough if we want to stream 4K and we have more users. So the ideal for this particular router here, at least on this house configuration, would be to put on the middle floor so that it could bring signal to the upper floor and to the floor below. Or even better, one unit on each floor blasting Wi-Fi. That would be insane. Now the app handles all the router management. We have the Wi-Fi settings, usage reports, guest networks, IoT devices, networks, one mesh integration which I'm curious to test out, network optimization, diagnosis and router or access point modes which we can select which one we can use. Now we can even tweak the LEDs on, off or schedule for night time where it will automatically turn off during the night. For advanced settings we can use the web interface on our phone or on our PC and we have a lot of settings to change. And because it is so slim, it doesn't look like a router, it doesn't feel like a router, sometimes I forget why do we have all this software here. It's because it's a router so it deserves to have its own software. We really need features like parental controls where we can block sites, filter content, set internet limits per device and even as alerts which is really interesting in my opinion for new devices when they join our network. So although it's really small, really thin, lightweight and in my opinion not only to put it on a wall because I honestly like to see it on a desk like this exceeded my expectations especially on the coverage and on the speed because I was expecting a nice performance but compared with other units that we have seen some of them with huge antennas so that we have better signal and 
and whatnot. This one without external antennas, just like this, has this kind of result, which is awesome. Now, the only thing that didn't work 100% with me was the wall mounting. Although it's really simple, when we place in the cables, they might get a bit pushing to the wall and then the router will be with a small gap here on the bottom compared with the top. So I would consider those U-shaped cables so that we can have a flush fit but this was the only thing that I could find that was not 100%. Everything else worked flawlessly. And of course, the router comes with all the accessories that we need, either to attach it or hang it to the wall. And I've got a few more TP-Link devices to test out and share with you, which I was curious, but now this one made me more curious to see how effectively our phones and tablets will work when we move from one area to the other area where we have other TP-Link device and that the device disconnects from this one and connects to the other one. As we know, we have tested a few brands here. Not all of them work as they should. So I really have high expectations for the TP-Link devices, but we will test them out. And of course, I will be sharing all the results here with you. Hopefully you've enjoyed to meet the TP-Link Archer Air 5. If that was the case, don't forget the usual thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Huerto George, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.